So I will ask first uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Joe Stallman to present on the uh, building design consultation process and programming. Uh, I would ask members to hold questions until the conclusion of Mr. Stallman's presentation. At that point in time, questions about the process or any uh, issues related to the work of his uh, company in this consultation process. And then we will move on uh, to a presentation uh, from Steve Berg, an architect at BWBR, about a proposed solution to the state office building challenge. Um, so without further ado, Mr. Stallman, if you could please identify yourself for the record and begin your presentation. Mr. Chair and committee members, thank you. My name is Joe Stallman. I am a vice president at MOCA. Uh, MOCA is the service division under the larger umbrella MOCA Systems, Inc. And uh, we also have a software division, Touch Plan, which is a uh, uh, commutative construction software. Um, MOCA is a full service owner's representative project management firm. Uh, we have nine offices across the country and one right here in downtown St. Paul. We have a specialization in capital complex projects um, and I'm proud to lead that charge uh, at, the, uh, at the national level. Uh, I know some of you from my time here at the Minnesota State Capitol Restoration from the years 2012 through 2017. Uh, during that time, I also served uh, in the same capacity for the um, construction, design and construction of the Senate building, as well as parking ramp F, and that is in the uh, owner's project representative or owner's project management role. Uh, since that time, uh, my team and I have worked on projects very similar to this in the states of Wyoming, California, Missouri, and even the U.S. Capitol in Washington, D.C. Uh, these are a unique building type with unique challenges and uh, they take a unique skill set. I'm proud to say that MOCA is an industry leader in this particular building type as it pertains to owner's project management and I'm proud to lead that charge. Uh, I say that with confidence, uh, however, that did not preclude us from needing to uh, compete for this work. Uh, there was a public RFP process uh, that RFP was released uh, about a year ago now, um, and we submitted our proposal for. Uh, we were notified of um, tentative selection over spring break of last year and uh, negotiated that contract. We were under contract by the end of March of 2022 as owner's project manager. Uh, as for what an owner's project manager does as it pertains to design scoping and schematic design, uh, MOCA has developed a, a system we call Early Project Definition and Alignment, EPDNA. Uh, I could speak at length about that. Uh, for the most part, though, I will talk about the workshop process that is a, a contributor to that. The idea is that we, uh, the importance, we, we recognize the importance of early decision making in a project and how that really leads to a successful project, how identifying the key goals uh, before, uh, long before pen hits paper is a key to a successful project and making sure that that is a collaborative process, that it is, uh, involves partisan and nonpartisan people, that it is uh, a process that identifies very early what the end goals will be and ensuring a, a successful project. So as for our workshop process here for the Minnesota State Office Building, uh, we did nine total workshops. The, actually numbered one through eight because we had a visioning session at the beginning. And I will go through each of those today. Uh, those nine total workshops, a typical workshop would be three full days of uh, intense uh, involvement with all tenant groups and uh, really great discussions, talking about different subject matters at each workshop. Uh, those three days uh, make for a long week. We take a week off and our team kind of recalibrates and talks about what we learned and what we uh, might ask at the next one. Uh, so that spanned four months uh, from June 1st through the end of September. And uh, we had a lot of really great participation. We did them right here in this room. Uh, for the record, we are in room 10 of the state office building. And we would fill the dais with, uh, with very interested tenant group members. Um, and we would also, on our off times, would work with breakout meetings with each of the tenant groups. The idea is that we get thorough engagement. 
and that we are reaching out to, as I said, partisan and nonpartisan uh, people within the building, that we're talking to not only elected members, but the very important staff uh, that really make the business happen within this building. Um, typically, we would reach out to department heads, and those heads would then uh, help us determine which of their staff would be best fit for each of the subject matters and who should be in this room for each discussion. Uh, that includes the House. We would ask leadership to uh, help us determine who we should be reaching out to. And we also had a House member session, so I will talk a little bit more about that on an uh, upcoming slide and, of course, leadership check-ins. This slide is uh, uh, an example of who we initially reached out to on the left and how that list changed over time as uh, the group got a better understanding of the goals and, and the rhythm of what a workshop process looks like. And so we would see new faces come and go throughout the process, uh, partisan and nonpartisan. <coughs> Here's a, a look at what this room looked like during the workshop. Uh, we would fill the dais, as I mentioned. This particular picture looks like it was uh, a systems uh, discussion because I see a lot of plant management people uh, along the edge of of the dais there. Uh, the following picture here, uh, I can tell, is a discussion about what a committee room or a hearing room should function like. Uh, and this was a great forum to have that discussion in. We talked about how the dais should be shaped. We talked about uh, where staff should be located, how you enter and exit a room, and all of the security and accessibility uh, challenges that are currently existing in this building and that uh, could be solved with a restoration. There was a six-member panel that we met with twice throughout that process, and the names are listed here, uh, bipartisan, of course. And uh, we also met with leadership throughout the process, uh, sometimes uh, uh, together and sometimes separately. So I will start with what we call the visioning workshop. That would be, be the first of the nine. Um, and the idea is to bring everyone to the table and identify what the values and principles, the main drivers of the project would be. Uh, it's uh, trying to determine what is most important to the tenant groups. We ask that each uh, person in the room start to think about those things and, and give us ideas of what those items that are most important are. We captured them on what we call snow cards. Uh, we posted them on the wall. We then started to reorganize them in like ideas so that we could take very defined ideas and put them in similar categories. We asked the group to go up and vote on these uh, ideas with uh, quite simply drafting dots so that we could understand after the discussion, now how do you feel about what's most important on this? And then we would prioritize those. The, the idea is that we would come up with a set of uh, core values, uh, hopefully more than one, less than a handful, and the result of which is uh, these four core values that you see here. Now, these would become our values that will uh, be key in the discussions throughout the workshop process, but not only that, but throughout design. And uh, given the opportunity to continue this, we will continue to uh, champion these four core values through uh, future uh, phases of design as well. You will notice that the first two uh, are inherently in conflict with each other, and that gives us a challenge on the design team. <coughs> this building needs to be secure and safe, but it also needs to be open and accessible, and that is a noisy task. Uh, our design team understands the need, the equal need for both of those things to be met. Uh, we also have two more core values, the functional uh, aspect of this building and how each tenant operates within this structure, uh, not only the house but uh, the other tenants as well. And then uh, character was uh, determined. And when I use the word character, I want, to, um, I want to take a little time to say that's not necessarily meaning that it's art deco or some style of architecture. The character that we are referencing here is that that reflects the importance of the work that is being conducted within this building. That you uh, understand when you enter this building that this is the, the public's 
uh, business that is happening in here. This is the people's place, <coughs> and that uh, that the people who work here are serving the public. So with that uh, under our belt, we started the next eight workshops, which are numbered one through eight, and eight being a summary uh, and a program uh, review. Workshop one was a little bit of housekeeping. We talked about the importance of building information modeling, which we call BIM, uh, in, uh, in real terms, it's uh, a computer model of what the building is, and we wanted to make sure that we start on the right foot with plant management, with admin, with our tenant groups to see what they want to see out of that building model. We also determined that we would be doing laser scanning, both interior and exterior, uh, to get a really good, accurate uh, measurements of the building itself. We talked about file sharing, and we also went into uh, a little bit of what the most important aspects of the building to maintain are, and that's what we would call preservation zoning. Uh, there are beautiful aspects of this building in both detail and materials. Um, there's a lot of discussion around the elevator cores and the circulation patterns on first floor that, uh, uh, that would need to be maintained, uh, ideally, from a historical sense. Um, as well as uh, some beautiful lighting that, uh, historical lighting that is existing within the building. We started to talk about uh, square foot needs assessments with each of the tenants, and I say started because that process uh, carried through each of the workshops, and we continued to work with our tenant groups on square foot needs uh, right up to uh, the week prior to this hearing. Uh, we broke the rules of, uh, of presentation here because there are handouts, so there's a little narrative that goes along with these uh, on each of the workshops. And I will speak to the, uh, each of the slides, but um, I encourage you to re read up on each of <coughs> what happened at the workshops. Workshop two focused on committee rooms and hearing rooms and uh, a lot of discussion about security and accessibility as it pertains to these rooms. Um, we also talked about conference rooms, meeting and support spaces. At the end of that discussion, it was determined that the group as a whole uh, found that it would be ideal, in fact needed, to have 10 committee rooms uh, at the end of this project, which is what we have now. Uh, those sizes uh, would change. We have, two, we, we have three different sizes uh, that would be labeled large, medium, and small. Uh, two large hearing rooms are needed at 260 to 300 people capacity. Four medium hearing rooms at 150 to 200 people capacity. And four small hearing rooms at 75 to 100. Uh, there is also a lot of discussion about the need for conference rooms and where those could be strategically <coughs> located as they pertain to offices. Workshop three then was about offices. And because we were talking about that, it was a good chance to talk about circulation and how you approach those offices, how the public interacts with not only member offices, but other departments as well. And uh, of course, the natural light discussion. Uh, the original design of this building had two atriums that allowed natural light to the center of the building. And in the 1980s, those were filled in, um, allowing for, uh, well, not allowing for a lot of natural light to the center of the building. And so there was a, a desire to reintroduce that, that aspect in some way, shape, or form. And what we found was there was uh, actually efficiencies in getting natural light to offices. Uh, and we would find that you could find more <coughs> members' offices on each floor if we, uh, if we did go down that path. We also defined what an office was, and we saw five different sizes of those offices. Um, those would consist of leadership offices, member offices, department head offices, staff offices with a door, and staff workstations. So uh, that was a, a key factor in starting to uh, lay out what a, a floor might look like as it pertains to how people work. Workshop number four was on security, life safety, and accessibility. And uh, it's important to note that this workshop focused on those three items, but all of the workshops addressed those three items. Uh, a main factor uh, for the need 
uh, to increase the, uh, the productivity in this building uh, always went back to security, life safety, and accessibility. And I know a lot of that was touched upon on Monday, and you will see some of those, um, some of those factors in the design presentation after this one. Workshop number five is what we in the business call MEP, uh, Mechanical, Electrical, and Plumbing. Uh, we've talked at length on Monday about what those deficiencies are in the building. Uh, we also talked a lot about what the sustainability goals would be for this project and the importance of meeting those goals uh, and exceeding uh, the baselines that were set years ago. Um, we also talked about the tunnel. Uh, the tunnel system was discussed as a challenge and uh, something that we want to uh, address. It's not part of this immediate project, um, but uh, it, will, it will be a challenge to, to meet the needs of a, a tunnel that still needs some more work. Workshop number six talked about telecom and broadcast. Uh, I would say that the, uh, the need for hearings to be broadcast has increased in the past few years. And as such, uh, broadcast media and their space needs have grown. Uh, there were spaces that were used for other things, like press conferences that have now been uh, taken over by video editing and those kinds of things that have increased in demand due to the pandemic. And so we, uh, we spent a lot of time really getting a, a good handle on what the future needs are for broadcast. Workshop 7, uh, another acronym that we use, FF and E, uh, furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Not only the loose furniture in the building, uh, but also the fixed furniture, like that is what is behind me uh, right now. Um, we talked about all of those needs, and uh, the idea here was that flexibility would be key in many of the spaces when it comes to furniture. And finally, workshop number eight uh, is, was our summary. And this is where, by this time, after four months of workshopping and talking to tenant groups and meeting both online and offline with them, uh, we were finally getting really comfortable with our space needs. Um, the list you see, this is in a, uh, two slides that are broken up here uh, just due to the size, so their legibility. The square footage here represents gross square footage. They include grossing factors. And what I mean by that is, uh, I, will, uh, I will say if I needed an office uh, of 200 square feet, and Steve next to me in my department also needs an office of 200 square feet, it would be easy to say that our square footage needs are 400 square feet. Uh, but within that area, uh, we need some space for circulation, and we need walls, so we would have a gross up factor before design ever happens, that we would understand that it's a little bit more than 400 square feet. That's within our, de our department. And we take all of the departments together, and there is another grossing factor that goes on top of that uh, in, the, in the area of 35%. So that the uh, numbers you see here reflect uh, percentage-wise of what the needs are for each of the tenants. This is the first slide. The second slide shows uh, more of those tenants and a total square footage need at the bottom of 456,000 square feet. The existing building that we are sitting in today is 290,000 square feet. So future needs for uh, full functionality of all tenant groups, um, there is a delta. And that means there is a need uh, to either relocate uh, some of the tenant groups or to build an addition onto this building. Questions for Mr. Stallman? Representative Pryor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just that last point that you're making, um, could you tell me again the square feet that we're lacking <coughs> right Mr. now? Mr. Stallman. Mr. Chair and committee members, uh, I'll go back a slide. 456,000 square feet is the need and, and change. 290 is the existing building. So uh, 166,000 if my math is correct, uh, is the delta uh, at, as the building stands today. Thank you. Thank you. 